Now available in paperback and e-readers, Isis, all about the goddess. The goddess next door bears all in the art studio to catch a campus stalker in this action-packed Isis series mystery. Get your copy of Isis, all about the goddess in paperback and e-readers at online booksellers everywhere. Historical Women in Crisis one of my viewers wanted me to do another installment in the Historical Women in Crisis series. And for this installment in the Historical Women in Crisis series, I'm going to be talking about former Canadian First Lady Margaret Trudeau. Now, Margaret Trudeau is the ex-wife of Canadian Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau and is the mother of Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. And Margaret Trudeau basically wound up on the road to becoming a woman in crisis because she was born a part of the baby boomer generation. Now, Margaret Trudeau was born Margaret Sinclair to Scottish-born James Jimmy Sinclair, a former member of the Liberal Parliament of Canada, and Doris Sinclair. And as Margaret Trudeau was born a part of the baby boomer generation, she basically was given everything, and as she was given everything and lived a very, very nice life, she basically grew up during the time of the 1960s with other baby boomers, and as a part of that baby boomer generation, she basically wound up becoming one of these flower children, which was a fancy 50 cent way of saying feminist, because most flower childs, while they were so-called free spirits, were basically feminist indoctrinated women, and these feminist indoctrinated women grew up learning a dysfunctional life paradigm where they did not learn how to work with men as partners in God's order. No, most of these women learned that they could go out here and be leaders of themselves, and as they learned they could be leaders of themselves, this made it where these women were basically incompatible with any man in a relationship. And as Margaret Trudeau, then Margaret Sinclair, was with her family and vacationing in Tahiti with her family, this is where she wound up meeting Pierre Trudeau, who was the Minister of Justice at the time, and she didn't recognize him as related to his political position, and that was basically due to the way she was raised, because a flower child doesn't really see or respect authority figures, because they have never been taught to respect anyone in God's order as a man. So, Pierre Trudeau was, um, saw Margaret Sinclair, and when he saw her, he became captivated by her and wanted to pursue her, even though he was 29 years older than her. Now, what was happening here with Pierre Trudeau and Margaret Sinclair basically lays the foundation for what happened with many baby boomers in that this created the dysfunctional codependent relationship that many people of the baby boomer generation had due to feminism, where you had the beta male who was out here looking to submit to the leadership and authority of a woman, and this beta male, because he was in his rose-colored reality and saw a fantasy ideal of what he thought a woman was, wanted to go out here and pursue that relationship with that woman based on the fantasy they had, but didn't want to see the real person. So this was a femi the, the codependent feminist simp paradigm. And what was happening here was Pierre Trudeau wanted to pursue this relationship with Margaret Sinclair. And as he pursued this relationship with Margaret Sinclair, he kept the romance private. And he kept the romance private because he wanted to go out here and maintain his image as the stalwart prime minister who was a traditional man, but he wanted to have his romance in secret with Margaret Sinclair, the 18-year-old girl, and he didn't want to have his world disrupted. So in order to keep his world smooth, what he did was go out here and pursue Margaret Sinclair in secret, and as he was running for election for 
the Canadian Prime Ministership. This is where he decided to go out here and reveal his relationship, which was something that was majorly scandalous because a 47-year-old man pursuing an 18-year-old girl, this was something that would be considered not traditional. And the whole thing was that uh, this is what led to start the start of issues as related to their relationship later on because you had Pierre Trudeau who was a traditional man with a feminist indoctrinated woman and that's what basically led to serious problems with their relationship after the honeymoon period. Now after the honeymoon period this is where the relationship between Margaret Trudeau and her husband started to have issues and it started to have issues because a feminist is completely different than a woman. Now, as I talk about in my book, The Woman Crisis, there is a major difference between a feminist and a woman. A woman is designed and raised to be a help me to a man and look to submit to the authority of men in helping them work to build whatever that man is doing as part of God's work. And that woman who is out here looking to see a value in men and see a value in having relationships with men. Whereas a feminist is raised not to value men or to see herself looking to be a part of a relationship with a man under God's order. And a feminist doesn't want to submit to the authority of a man nor does she interested in helping to meet the needs of a man. No, she's all about herself. And because a feminist is all about herself, this is what causes friction between herself and a man. And this is what caused friction between Pierre Trudeau and his wife, Margaret, as he was looking to go out here and have a wife who would fit into his world and be a helpmeet by reflecting on him in a positive fashion. What Margaret Trudeau wanted to do because she was a young feminist indoctrinated woman was go out here and be her own woman. And she basically said that she felt like she was being stuffed in a, a glass of some sort and felt like she couldn't be the person she wanted to be in the, in the relationship as she went out here and had three children, including Justin Trudeau, who was going to be the future uh, um, Prime Minister of Canada. Now, she said that she wanted to be more than a rose in her husband's lapel, and this statement right here showed how she was going to cause friction because a woman who's a part of politics in back in those days before feminism wanted to go out here and reflect positively on her husband by not making too much noise but margaret trudeau basically wanted to go out here and be her own woman and as she was looking to try to go out here and try to reflect on him and trying to become more active in his campaign she basically embarrassed him because of her youth and inexperience talking about how her husband taught her a lot about loving, showing how she basically, even though she wanted to go out here and be her own woman, was not really a good fit for the relationship. Unfortunately, Pierre Trudeau could not see this because he was a beta male simp. And because he was a beta male simp who was just mesmerized by her booty and was only thinking about her as related to the skid mark jockey panties that he was getting a taste of the waste from, he really was not really understanding that this woman was completely incompatible with him as related to his political aspirations. And as the prime minister, he needed a woman who would reflect positively on him and look to go out here and present a positive image of womanhood. Unfortunately, what, what Margaret Trudeau was really doing was basically not fitting in and Pierre Trudeau was basically clueless to it because he didn't understand that this woman didn't want to be a wife of a prime minister and she felt like a glass panel was being lowered around a place around her like a patient in a mental hospital and felt like she couldn't make decisions without being exposed in a harsh light. And again, this is where she felt because she was one of these free spirits, which is another, again, 50 cent word for a feminist. And with her being a free spirit, she wanted to go out here and do whatever she wanted. 
So this is where the marriage really started to deteriorate. And it started to deteriorate because Justin Trudeau, like most beta males, what not Justin Trudeau, Pierre Trudeau, like most beta males, what he did was go out here and start becoming distant because with beta males, whenever they have to deal with a woman and try to meet her emotional needs, these men are not capable of meeting a woman's emotional needs. So what they do is go out here and put distance between themselves and the woman by using work as a deflection. And as they use work as a deflection, they don't go out here and form emotional connections and bonds with women. And that leaves those women to be unfulfilled. And, that, and that's what Margaret Trudeau was feeling as she was having a relationship with Pierre because he didn't look to meet her emotional needs and she was trying to raise three sons by herself. She basically was feeling like she was not really getting emotionally satisfied by the relationship. So she started going out here and participating in passive aggressive behavior in order to rebel against her husband. And this started with her going out here and doing things like smuggling drugs in the Prime Minister's luggage, making scantily clad appearances at Studio 54, and tearing apart a quit quilt by Canadian conceptual artist Joyce Wheeland on the wall of the Prime Minister's office because it celebrated reason over passion. And that basically was something that foreshadowed their relationship because one of the reasons why their relationship was deteriorating is because women are emotional and women want passion over reason. And what was being shown to her was that this man really didn't have any reason to be with her because he had no passion for her. And he had no passion for her because he basically wanted, he objectified her. He saw her as a fantasy that he wanted to fit into his smooth world. He saw her as somebody who he wanted to go out here and fit into his world in order to be the ideal woman for him. He really didn't see her as a helpmeet that would help him be able to uh, set a vision for where he wanted to take Canada or a direction that he wanted to take Canada. No, he saw her as a attractive woman he wanted to have on his arm and go out here and bear children for him. That's what Pierre Trudeau basically saw Margaret Trudeau as. And again, this feminist indoctrinated woman basically was resisting this man. And this is what led to their relationship basically falling completely apart. And as that relationship started falling apart, she went from passive aggressive behavior of looking to rebel against her husband by go, going from going to put the drugs in the luggage and taking the scantily clad appearances and tearing up quilts to going out here and expressing her contempt for Pierre Trudeau by going out here and having affairs with men who she believed had equally high status in Hollywood, such as Jack Nicholson and Ryan O'Neill and Lou Rawls, and even had a quote-unquote friendship with Senator Ted Kennedy, and also got involved with members of the Rolling Stones, and also, again, went out here and started to have all of these different sexual affairs, expressing her contempt for the beta male she was with, and basically participating in scouting out another man to be with, because most of these feminist indoctrinated women are hypergamous, and once they get what they want out of a man, that's when they start looking to find another man to go be with. And as Margaret Trudeau was basically being turned out by all of these different guys and being, again, pumped and dumped by all of these guys, Pierre Trudeau was basically made to be embarrassed and emasculated by his promiscuous wife, who basically was out here showing how little respect that she had for him by going out here and letting all of these different guys go out here and get a taste of the atomic waste from the special place as she's dropped the skid mark Vanity Fair draws and allowed these guys to go out here and go out here and participate in some nuclear fusion. Now things really got really bad for Pierre Trudeau as his wife was emasculating him and it got so bad to the point where he wound up separating from his wife who went out here and expressed more contempt for her husband who she had no respect for by going to give tell-all interviews to Canadian and American magazines 
going out here airing all of his dirty laundry and exposing his skid mark jockey draws to the entire world. Again, embarrassing one of the world's political leaders and on a high stage and embarrassing him to the point where she basically showed how she had no respect for him at all as related to the entire marriage and led to the point where they wound up again making where Pierre Trudeau basically was able to go to court and get custody of his children and not pay her any spousal support. But that didn't matter to Margaret Trudeau because Margaret Trudeau was a free spirit and wanted to go out here and live her best life. I mean, basically, she is a model for today's modern woman. Margaret Trudeau basically is a model for today, many of today's modern women that you see out here today who get married to what they think is a high value man but these women don't value that man at all and they don't value that man because they only want to go out here and again get what get the social status elevated by these men but they have no respect or no regard for that man all they're thinking about is I'm with a high status man and the, I'm gonna get with that man, but I, when I get in a relationship with him, the, the problem is this man cannot meet her emotional needs, and because he can't meet her emotional needs, she starts expressing her anger and contempt for that man, and as she expresses that anger and contempt for that man, that's when her behavior goes from passive disrespect and to just a contempt. Again, this is the same thing that Tariq Nasheed talked about in his classic video, The Seven Levels of Disrespect, and that's what happened to Pierre Trudeau. He got the seven levels of disrespect. And what happened in 1979 was Pierre Trudeau's party wound up losing a majority of seats in the House of Commons. And at that time, Margaret Trudeau wasn't at her husband's side as, as related to dealing with this major defeat. No, she was in dancing in Studio 54 in New York City, shaking her booty. And that image of her at the disco was featured on the the pages of front pages of, of newspapers in Canada basically putting the death knell on Pierre Trudeau's career and emasculating and embarrassing him on the world stage because if a man's wife who was again a reflection of him has no respect for him what it does is it sends a message that other men and other women don't need to respect him because he's not seen as a leader or an authority figure and that's what happened to the Prime Minister of Canada he was not seen as a leader and an authority figure in his home and that was reflected to the world by the contemptuous behavior that Margaret Trudeau showed him and the main reason why she showed him all of this contempt is because she was a feminist indoctrinated woman and most feminist indoctrinated women, even if they are free spirits, really resent the power that God has given men. And because they resent the power that God has given men, what they do is, while they want to get involved with that man to get his social status, they are very jealous of that man's power, covet that man's power. And because they can't get that power, what they do is, again, go out here and participate in that passive aggressive and then escalate it to aggressive behavior and that's what happened here with Margaret Trudeau who it was a feminist from minute one and again this feminist had no just participated in what I call the textbook feminist paradigm because what feminists do is they oftentimes get involved with beta males because they want to get involved with them but because there's a power struggle between them in the relationship it always falls apart and it falls apart because the feminist never wants to submit to the leadership and authority of a man and because she doesn't want to submit to the leadership and authority of a man what these women do is again look to walk go out here and express their contempt for that man by looking to humiliate and em embarrass and emasculate those men and that's what led to the relationship deteriorating to the point where Justin, not Justin, but Margaret Trudeau wound up going out here and filing a no-fault divorce in 1983. And after that divorce was finalized in 1984, that's when she decided to go out here and monkey branch over to Ottawa real estate developer Fred Kemper. 
and decided to go out here and marry this man because she had already seen that she had already humiliated, embarrassed, and emasculated her husband. And she went over to Fred Kramper, the beta male, to go out here and marry this man. And after she married this man to make sure that she could go out here and maintain her access to resources, she then went out here and had two more children. So she had five children, but all of those children were raised to be dysfunctional because they grew up in homes with a feminist indoctrinated woman and a beta male father. And because these children wound up growing up in those homes, they basically grew up to become future men and women in crisis. And that's what we see what happened to her eldest son, Justin Trudeau, who basically is a textbook beta male, like I talk about in my book, The Man Crisis. And that is all to the dysfunctional way he was raised by Margaret Trudeau, who basically, again, was looking to sabotage her son because of the contempt she had for the beta male father she had gotten involved with. Because she had no respect for the father, she wound up raising the son to become dysfunctional. And as he wound up dealing with the divorce, he wound up believing that he needed to submit to the authority of women and wound up just as dysfunctional as his father, who himself was a man in crisis. And while Justin Trudeau has grown up to become a prime minister. He's just as dysfunctional as his father. And sadly, this is what happens because of the beta male paradigm with feminist indoctrinated women. And what's, what's happened with Margaret Trudeau over the years is she's tried to say that she has bipolar disorder. And this was the reason for her participating in all of the sexual promiscuity and all of the behavior she participated in. But I don't really believe that. I believe what happened here is that because Margaret Trudeau was raised dysfunctionally during the baby boomer generation and raised under the whole concept of feminism, what happened with Margaret Trudeau was that she wound up going out here and not learning to respect the authority of her husband, did not learn to respect him as a man, and did not see him as somebody she wanted to follow. No, she didn't see him as somebody she respected, and because she didn't respect Pierre Trudeau, she wound up looking to go out here and sabotage his political ass career, and she wound up looking to humiliate and emasculate him as related to his political career, and this is why Margaret Trudeau is a textbook example of a historical woman in crisis, because she followed the feminist indoctrinated life and as she followed the feminist indoctrinated life, she wound up going out here and de destroying her entire family. And she also wound up getting turned out by a bunch of Hollywood actors and singers like Lou Rawls, who possibly had the balls on, his, on her chin. I mean, all of those guys basically were smashing up P Margaret Trudeau like a uh, uh, Chevy Monza in a demolition derby. And as they were doing this, this basically was, again, embarrassing Pierre Trudeau, seeing that his wife was basically being turned out by American actors and entertainers who were getting a good laugh at the prime minister and showing that his official position was simp. Not prime minister, but simp, because only a simp and a cuck would let go out here and be out trying to go out here and your woman is getting turned out. I mean, this is the thing that basically embarrassed the prime minister and made him a laughing stock of the world, but he's a laughing stock of the world because he married a feminist indoctrinated woman, a feminist indoctrinated woman who was a woman in crisis. Now, if you want to learn more about what leads to women indoctrinated into feminism winding up on a dysfunctional road to becoming a woman in crisis, you can pick up my book, The Woman Crisis, on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. And you can also find The Woman Crisis at other online booksellers like Smashwords, the iBookstore, Google Play, Barnes & Noble, and you can also find it at other re retailers in paperback like Barnes & Noble, Walmart, and Target. And if you want to see me make more videos about historical women in crisis, you can send a donation to the Patreon, the PayPal, or the Cash App by clicking the links in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. 
now available in paperback and Kindle Unlimited. Isis, all that glitters. The Goddess Next Door takes on a bikini-clad bank robber in this action-packed all-new Isis series adventure. Get Isis, all that glitters in paperback and Kindle Unlimited today. Now available in paperback. From the author of the critically acclaimed book, The Man Crisis, comes The Woman Crisis. Learn why so many women have become lost in their quest to have it all in The Woman Crisis. Get your copy of The Woman Crisis in paperback at Amazon.com and online booksellers today. Support black-owned and black-operated digital broadcast media. www.niceradionetwork.com Nice Radio Network, broadcasting 24 hours a day, 7 days a week.